an antisocial young man who is addicted to playing the MMORPG Cross Reverie, Takuma, uses a Diablo game character who is so overpowered that nothing can match him, until the summoning spell suddenly transported him to another world with Diablo's appearance. In a new world that resembles his favorite game, Diablo is greeted by two girls who call out to him, Rem, the petite pantherian adventurer, and Shara, the busted elf summoner. They perform the ritual of slavery in an attempt to subdue him, but the spell backfires and causes them to become his slaves. Then, what will Diablo do next in the other world? Watch this video till the end. With the situation now more awkward than ever, Diablo decided to accompany the girls in finding a way to release their contracts while learning to adapt to his new existence as a threatening demon lord. At the end, they meet the head of the mage association in the city of Faltra, Celestine. She couldn't let go of the enslavement collar attached to them both. In that conversation, Celestine mentioned that Rem was precious because of something that was inside of her. Diablo became curious about Celestine's words. Rem was brought by Diablo into his room for interrogation. Rem finally told him everything, that within her resided the soul of the demon lord, Krebskelm. Rem didn't want to tell her secret to anyone because they would all leave her after knowing her secret. What's more, Rem's goal was simply to defeat the demon lord within her. Diablo decided to find a way to pull out the demon lord's soul and destroy it. Hearing that, Rem was very happy that someone would accept and help her. When Diablo was alone, suddenly one of Celestine's bodyguards, Galuk, attack Diablo using a level 30 salamander, Galuk attacks Diablo because he hates demonic figures like Diablo, but his attacks don't have any impact on Diablo, because Diablo has reached level 150. With his power, Diablo could easily vanish the salamander and make Galuk so frightened. To restore his stamina, he returned to the inn and rested there. When he woke up, Diablo was very surprised to see Rem and Shara in the same bed with him. In order to earn income, Rem invited Diablo and Shara to register for an adventurer's guild. They would measure the level and strength of the adventurers to determine the right mission. Witnessing Diablo's strong power, Sylvie, who was the guild master of that place, gave them a mission to defeat the Snake Madara in the man-eating woods. Arriving in the woods, they were surrounded by the elves, and it was revealed that Shara was a princess from the elf kingdom. The elves thought Shara had been made a slave by Diablo and immediately attacked him. Once again, the attack had no effect on Diablo's body at all. Diablo countered the attack by freezing the surrounding area. It turned out that the mission for Diablo and his group was a trap from Galuk who still held a grudge against Diablo until he tried to pit Diablo against the elves. Because his plot is exposed, Galuk chooses to run away. To confirm her status, Shara told to the elves that she was not willing to go home and chose to adventure together with Diablo and Rim. Back at the inn, Shara had an intimate conversation with Diablo, who started to have an interest in him. Even Shara didn't rebel when Diablo squeezed her a pay, although Diablo was actually just acting manly to cover up his geeky true personality. The following day, they went to the guild to get their next mission. Sylvie asked them to deliver wine to the Ullet Bridge. Rem decided not to come with them. As they were about to go on a mission, they meet the strongest warrior in the Adventurer's Guild, Emil. He confronted Diablo because of the rumors circulating that Diablo had made two cute girls as his slaves. As a woman defender, Emil doesn't accept that and tries to attack him. Yeah, he's just like Sanji. He had to admit Diablo's superiority and lost in a ridiculous way. Shara explained about the untrue rumors, made Emil finally understood and decided to make Diablo a friend. When Diablo and Shara arrived at the Ullet Bridge, the soldiers were preparing to fight against the demon army that was about to attack the city. Diablo decided to help the soldiers by fighting the demon army alone, considering the strength of the soldiers was not comparable to the demon army. In the middle of the city, Celestine meets with Rem to apologize because her member, Galuk, has put Rem in a dangerous situation. Suddenly Galuk came to feel disapproved of Celestine's decision to fire him. Galuk did his thing based on a woman's words. He took a dagger and stabbed it into his body, turning himself into a fallen, Gregor, who would attack anyone in his path. 
While the demon army had arrived at the Ullid Bridge, Diablo went head to head with the leader of the demon army, Eelgard. The purpose of the demon army attacking the citizen was to immediately resurrect the demon lord residing within Rem's body. Eelgard was in shock because her attack had no effect on Diablo. A soldier informs Diablo that Celestine and her army are fighting a fallen. Apparently a fallen is Eelgard's comrade to help realize her plan to resurrect the demon lord, Krebskelm. Diablo decided to immediately end the war using his grand magic, White Nova. The demon army that was striked by the attack vanished in an instant. Even the attack was able to strip Eelgard's clothes. Celestine and Emil were so overwhelmed with a fallen that they reached their limit. The perfect moment for Diablo to come to show them his strength. Using magic reflection, Diablo managed to defeat it and seal him. Rem was very grateful to Diablo for all the effort that had been put into helping her. They returned to the inn and went back to sleeping in the same bed until Sylvie came and informed them that the Lord of the City of Faltra was demanded to immediately return Shara to the Elf Kingdom. If within ten days the request is not fulfilled, there will be a wage war between the two sides. Sylvie asked Diablo to prevent the war, plus Shara's older brother, Kira, made Shara a fugitive with a huge bounty. Diablo became furious and opposed it all. He made an initial plan by meeting the lord of the city of Faltra, Galford, who was once a hero of the city. Galford forced Diablo to hand Shara over to the Elf Kingdom because Galford didn't want his army to die in vain. Shara insists that she doesn't want to return to her kingdom because she wants to be herself and find her true self without any ties. Hearing that answer, Galford left everything to Diablo to prevent a war from occurring. They would be assisted by Alicia, an Imperial Night Girl. Shortly after buying the equipment, Shara was kidnapped by a group of demi-humans. But their efforts were stopped by Sanji, I mean Emil. From here, Diablo realized that many people were targeting Shara because they were tempted by her bounty. Diablo promised Shara that he would always protect her. A slave caravan arrived in the city a few days before. They tried to go to one of the slave traders to release Shara and Rem's enslavement collar. They meet with one of the owners, Medeos. She told Diablo to enter Shara's body so he could see the magic flow in her body. Shara and erotic clothes made it difficult for Diablo to concentrate. Although in the end, he was able to see the magic flow. Diablo chose to give up because there were so many sub-magic energy. Unexpectedly, Shara's older brother, Kira came to the end to persuade Shara to return to the Elf Kingdom, but Shara once again refused. Diablo was very angry with Kira, who had made Shara a fugitive. Although Diablo managed to get Kira out of there, Kira was still determined to bring Shara back home no matter what happened. Diablo had a dream about his childhood. When he woke up, he was still surprised to see the girl sleeping with him in a messy position. Alicia and Rem intended to report Kira's arrival to Galford, while Diablo and Shara would make potions. When Diablo was concocting the potion, there was the sound of the flute being played by Kira. Shara suddenly changed her mind to return to the Elf Kingdom. Kira then took Shara with him, but Diablo felt something strange about Shara. Rim was surprised when she found out that Shara had returned to the Elf Kingdom. She talked to Diablo about the dream Shara wanted to fulfill with them. Diablo noticed that Shara changed after she heard the sound of the flute from Kira, realized that something was wrong. Diablo invited Rim to catch up with Kira and reclaim Shara. They would be helped by Alicia who overheard their conversation. On the other hand, it was true that Shara was controlled by Kira. He did all of this so that Shara became his hire. He didn't want other people to touch Shara. Even Kira tried to rape Shara using slime to tear her clothes bit by bit. At the right time, Diablo appeared to save Shara. Yeah, Diablo, you showed up too soon. You should show up in a few minutes. Diablo was furious to see Kira's treatment of Shara. Kira didn't realize that his entire army had been defeated by Diablo. He didn't even know what to do as the area around them was already surrounded by flames as his last effort. Kira tried to regain control of Shara. Diablo had known that the trick using the power of the enslavement collar succeeded in awakening Shara until the hypnotic effect of Kira's magic disappeared. Kira still has his ace card. He summons the secret art of the elves, Force Hydra, a forbidden monster that can destroy the world. The mystical monster was so powerful that Diablo was so overwhelmed by it because he had never seen it in the game Cross Reverie he often played. Luckily Shara knew the monster's weakness and told Diablo, 
Using his magic power, Diablo managed to defeat the monster until nothing was left. When Diablo was about to finish off Kira, Shara stopped him because she still considered him an older brother even though she hated him too. Unexpectedly, Galford and his army appeared beheading Kira, who was about to run away, making Shara shocked to see Kira tragically died. Galford had the heart to do that because he thought that they had been at war. The war was thought to have started since Kira had entered his territory without permission. Galford ordered his army to finish off the elves scattered in the forest and capture Shara. Of course Diablo was against that, forcing Galford to use his magic to confine Diablo. With his experience reading the magic flow, Diablo managed to break the magic shield and then fought Galford. But again, Galford was no match for Diablo, he was still merciful by letting Galford live. Next time, he didn't hesitate to kill him and even destroy the entire city of Faltra to ashes, if Galford dared to disturb them. After that, Diablo returned to the inn, Sylvie entered to his room and offered him a bottle of alcohol to recover his stamina. Diablo didn't hesitate to try it even though he has never drank alcohol in his world. Just tasting it a little already made him lose control. Thankfully nothing happened what the fan like he wanted. <laughs> Alicia meets the Holy Knight, Sadler, who hates the weak so much that he doesn't hesitate to kill them. On the orders of the head priest, he intends to do something during the resurrection of the demon Lord Krebskalm later. Rim and Shara were washing their bodies in a river with the water flowing so calmly, an uninvited guest joined them. It was Eelgard who had suddenly appeared due to her sense the demon Lord's soul. Eelgard wanted to help Rem resurrect Krebskalm. On the other hand, Diablo didn't mind as long as it didn't hurt Rem, a fair decision for both sides, which became a matter of whether Diablo could defeat Krebskalm or not after his resurrection. Alicia invited Diablo and the others to immediately return to the inn because she was worried about them. On the way, they are intercepted by Sadler who suspects Diablo of being a demon lord worshipper. Sadler attempts to kill Diablo by turning him into stone, but Diablo's magic reflection manages to reverse Sadler's attack. Forcing his men to retreat, Alicia regretted Diablo's actions of not killing Sadler because he was a very dangerous and indiscriminate person. Three days had passed since they met Edelgard. It was time for Rim to go to the Starfall Tower for the demon lord Krebskelm's resurrection ritual. The ritual was similar to the ritual to release the enslavement collar, in which Diablo had to be able to find the center of the magic flow inside Rem's body. To make things easier, Eelgard suggested Diablo enter through the pleasure hole. But this time the magic sub-energy wasn't as much as he saw before. Diablo's great efforts paid off. Finally the demon Lord Krebskalm rose from Rem's body. Beyond what they imagined, the demon lord with the appearance of an innocent little girl, Glebslam, turned out to be kind and innocent, she even acts like a normal child who loves biscuits. When they were about to return to the city, the demon's strongest and most loyal servant, Eulorex, confronted them to welcome the resurrection of Glebsklum. He asked the demon lord's permission to annihilate the humans around them as a form of celebration of the demon lord's resurrection. But Glebsklum forbids it because she still wants to eat human-made biscuits. Feeling Glebsklum is not in line with her destiny as a demon lord, Yurlex intends to kill her. Eelgard is on Glebsklum's side to comply with all of her wishes. Eelgard was overwhelmed against Yurlex making Diablo intervene to help her. With his experience when playing Cross Reverie, Diablo easily defeated the strongest demon servant, Yurlex, forcing him to withdraw from the fight. Diablo and the others returned to the inn. Shara tried to please Diablo by giving her best service to relieve his fatigue. <sighs> It turns out that Alicia and Sadler have the same goal, to create a beautiful world for mankind. Beautiful in the connotation of a bad meaning, therefore, Alicia devised a plan to get the demon lord to carry out her task of destroying mankind. After having fun buying biscuits, Alicia took Glebsklum and Rim to a place without Diablo knowing. Apparently Alicia had been carrying out her plan for a long time. Even Galak's words referring to a woman at that time were Alicia. Rim and Glebslum are kidnapped by Sadler and his men. They are both taken to a church. Sadler thinks of himself as a god who will punish anyone who worships the demon lord. Even though Rim has admitted that she is not a demon lord worshipper, Sadler will still torture her. 
Diablo, who was looking for the whereabouts of Rim and Glebsclum, arrived at a cafe and got information about the location where Rim was. The royal army set up a barrier to prevent the demon army from entering the city. Seeing Rem tortured brutally by Sadler, Glebsclum becomes furious and transforms into the form of the true demon lord, Krebskelm. It was not expected by Sadler. He tried to make the demon lord submit to him, but instead he vanished by attack from the demon lord. With that, Alicia's plan to resurrect her was a success. Shara came after Diablo. She would take care of Rim by treating her using a potion made by Diablo. Meanwhile, Diablo will fight Krebskelm and the battle between the two demon lords begins. Edelgard welcomes Alicia for having succeeded in developing a slightly changed plan, and it turns out that from the start Alicia has been a servant of the demon lord along with Edelgard. Diablo kept trying hard to rise up and defeat the demon lord, but she was so strong that she overwhelmed Diablo. Healed and recovering from her injuries, Rem explains about Alicia's evil plan of deliberately igniting Glebsclum's hatred to resurrect the demon lord, Emil came to protect Rem and Shara, so Diablo could focus on defeating the demon Lord Krebskelm. Finally, Diablo can use his grand magic, Apocalypse Abyss, the attack knocked Krebskelm down. Krebskelm, who had been seriously injured, managed to be resuscitated by Rem after seeing that she was fine. Her giant form was destroyed and transformed back into the form of a little girl, Glebskelm. The demon army and Ulurex are angry to Edelgard for failing to carry out her plan for a second time. Because of that, Eelgard and Alicia fled towards the city. Sylvie came with orders to arrest Glebskelm for her actions. Even though it was actually Krebskelm's doing, Diablo had the idea of making Glebskelm his slave, so he could look after and watch over her, and it was agreed by Glebskelm. All of Diablo's efforts to protect the city of Faltra made Galford feel indebted to Diablo. When Diablo was about to rest with his slaves, Alicia suddenly came and threatened Shara. Alicia's goal was only to ask Glebsclum for help to heal Edelgard, who was seriously injured after Alicia and Edelgard were attacked by the demon army. Glebsclum is willing to heal Edelgard. She apologized to Glebsclum for what she had done. She promised to follow and always be loyal to Glebsclum. Since childhood, Alicia only saw evil on the part of humans. Because of that she wanted to wipe out humanity and build a beautiful world, Alicia intended to kill herself because she felt that she had no place to live anymore but Diablo managed to stop her because he understood her feelings. After being lectured by Diablo, Alicia finally realized and chose to atone for her sins by exploring the world. But before that, the girls took off their clothes to give magic energy to Diablo, who was looking tired. At the end of the story, Diablo and his harem continue their journey for adventure. That's the end of the anime How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. If you like the story of this anime, I will make a recap of Season 2 for you. Or you prefer the video that appears on this end screen, just choose it. Take care of your health, and see you soon.